Hi, this is Liam O'Gogon. It's Sunday, the 6th of March, 2022, at about uh, 12.36. So this video is going to review, examine, um, interrogate a Facebook post that was placed by John Joseph Bradley on his Facebook page. And you're looking here at a screen capture of that, which I captured on the uh, 1446 and Wednesday the 2nd of March. So it was sometime over four days ago that this <coughs> um, post was posted. So to, in this video, a couple things I'm trying to attempt. Firstly, I'm, I'm recording this on a an iPad using an iPencil and a, an, a Bluetooth mouse. And part of this is part of... Uh, an ongoing exercise within the Scribble of Navarre, the Men's Shed and Gridor, uh, supported by the Mitigating Against Educational Disadvantage Fund uh, and a project around digital literacy. So part of what I'm hoping will come here <coughs> is looking at some of the tools that an, I an iPad, an iPencil and similar devices can help us with in <coughs> navigating this increasingly digital world. So the first thing I just want to look at... Uh, I'm going to interrogate this particular uh, post. Um, so just use an I'm <coughs> and, I, and maybe to put some background into this um, in relation to this is about really about a world where we need to fact check stuff. So first thing is uh, my contention and this is that this whole um, exercise by John Joseph Bradley and his partner Jimmy Boyle um, is a fabricated um, campaign to damage the men's shed in Guidor here in Donegal's Gilbonavar. And just noting this um, quotation I found, rumours are carried by haters, spread by fools, accepted by idiots. So that's just some background. The other one that I, I wanted as a preface to the work that I'm interested in doing here comes from a quotation that I first read in an article by David Hanley, a wonderful journalist, many, many years ago in the early 90s, um, as part of my work in uh, lecturing to electronic engineering students in the Institute of Technology in Dundalk on the subject of documentation. I read a wonderful article and I picked up this quotation from Confucius, which I think is important in terms of the background of this work. Uh, Confucius wrote, if language is not correct, then what is not, then what is said is not what is meant. So once again, if language is not correct, then what is said is not what is meant. If what is said is not what is meant, then what must be done remains undone. If this remains undone, morals and art will deteriorate. If justice goes astray, the people will stand about in help in helpless confusion. Hence, there must be no arbitrariness in what is said. This matters above everything, Confucius, which he wrote in 479 BC. So that's been a truism which has been around for a long time. Just again in the background. I'm making this recording extempore. I have a general idea of where I want to go with it. I'm going to try and do it in such a way I don't need to edit it afterwards. So just to bear that in mind. Um, the third quotation I just see in my photos there, I want to refer to this. Ignorance is not knowing the truth, but also unwilling to search for it. Stupidity is knowing the truth but refusing to agree with it because it doesn't fit your views. We have to stop under-analyzing facts because we don't like the direction they push us in. We can do better. So again, there sort of precepts which underpin the body work that I'm trying to look at here. And it's within that context that I want to um, review this particular post. And then I want to look at some of the other aspects of the post uh, that I think are of interest in relation to this. So the first thing is I'm just going to choose again. You should be able to see me. I'm using a Bluetooth mouse, which allows me to use a cursor here to try and bring you, the viewer's attention to how I'm manipulating or navigating the screen. So I'm going to edit this photograph. That's how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to use uh, the I'm going to use my Apple Pencil to try and highlight different aspects. So what I do is I need to go up here and invoke the uh, the eye pencil here as you see it. 
Okay, so the first thing I just wanted to pick out was, in my view, and this is my argument, there are a number of statements here which are either over the top, inaccurate, misleading, or absolutely or absolute faulted. So my objective is to try and highlight those one after the other in a forensic way. The other thing is, while this seems to be a bit like the war of the buttons over storm and a teacup or whatever, to me, this is <coughs> a fractal of a fundamental organizational development of problem that exists in many community groups all over the world in every sort of arena, um, where you get this, in my view, a massively vitriolic friction that emerges when organizations move from the passionate fledgling committed amateur um, engagement to requiring for sustainable purposes to transition towards a governance compliant administratively led, led organization and uh, to me the scene behind the scene here relates more to that than the specifics but the specifics are important in terms of trying to ascertain facts what we have here is a post posted out um in facebook and I want to examine the look at just the language, the emotive language. So I'll just read it. I think it's important for me to read this out first, just because apart from the, the details and the words, there is the emotiveness of the chosen language. Um, and a question about who wrote this, uh, you know, where does where's the actual editorialization come from? I leave the reader to imagine that. So it reads here. I just again, probably uh, just to time it, it shows two minutes. So is it again, if I just can cancel that back, the information on this, you'll see here, this was captured by me on Wednesday, the 2nd of March, having just been posted. So that contextualizes when that, uh, and again, you can see that that's the information so again if you're using an ipad in the photos app and the ipad it gives you the date there that i could i um captured that and so go back go back into my edit edit function um again go back and choose my um pencil and i just read through this so the first thing here is frail pensioner thrown out of guidor men's shed headline it has emerged that a frail 77-year-old has been thrown out of the Skubo Navarre, Guido Men's Shed, because he has complained about the atrocious state of the electric sockets in the shed. While he was away for the weekend, and without prior warning, his possessions were dumped outside the door of the shed. This happened on a Saturday morning, in the middle of one of the worst storms ever seen in West Donegal, and all his tools and belongings were totally ruined. This included many handmade items which are one-offs and were totally unique. These items were crafted to a really high standard and were intended to be sold for the benefit of the shed, some of them valued at hundred of euro. Jimmy Boyle said he suffered months of bullying from senior members of the shed, but was expelled for life because he refused to sign a code of conduct because of the lethal state of the electrics in the shed. I asked for a certificate to cover the sockets, which were overheating and in danger of, of, ongoing, of going on fire or electrocuting someone Jimmy said, instead, I was thrown out. Now, you will notice in me reading that, that obviously I have emphasized the words which were written there for emphasis. The frail pensioner emerged. Where did it emerge from? He was thrown out. Atrocious state. He was away for the weekend without prior warning. His possessions were dumped outside the door. It happened on a Sunday morning in the middle of the, one of the worst storms. In Western, all his tools were totally ruined. It included handmade eyes, one off, totally unique. These were to be sold for the benefit of the shed, some of them valued at 100 of euro. 
Jimmy Boyle said he suffered months of bullying from senior members, expelled for life because he refused to sign a code of conduct because of the lethal state of electrics. I asked for a certificate to cover the sockets, which were overheating in danger of going on fire or electrocuting. So <clears throat> these are all um, very emphasized uh, statements. So, you know, in trying to fact check these, one thing I want to do is fact check what could be regarded as facts and then query the, the level of emphasis that's placed on other elements. So what I'm going to try and do with my pencil, uh, my Apple pencil, because this is an exercise in, I suppose, functional di digital literacy learning as well as everything else. I want to just highlight some of these things. So I'll pick up my pen here and I'll pick up this second level. Uh, value. And the other thing is I I'll pick up a ruler. So down here, Again, I'm using a combination of a Bluetooth mouse uh, in my right hand and an Apple Pencil in my left hand. So I'm going to use a ruler, which I just use my fingers then to, I, I, because it'll allow me underline things better, right? So the first thing I just want to do, uh, what did I say? Uh, what did I see? The, okay, so we just say, let's pick up an emerge and we just call that number one. Uh, he was thrown out of the shed. That's number two. I want to look at that. Let me move down here. Atrocious state of the electrics. Yeah, well, I suppose this part because he complained. I want to look at that in conjunction with another point here. We'll just call that number three. Um, so while he was away for the weekend, so I need some commentary on that, number four. All right. Um, now, this is an important one without prior warning. Okay, and then we're talking about his, his being dumped outside the shed. So this was the middle of one of the worst storms in Donegal. So we want to interrogate that statement as well um, in terms of the dates, etc. And then all his tools were totally ruined. So these are all very definite. Now, okay, so we'll make, I'll, I'll just change the color on this one here because these are items of opinion in relation that one-offs been totally unique. It's also a matter of opinion as regards standards. Um, uh, sorry, that's in the terms of the, the, the eye of the beholder. But this statement here, it was intended to be sold for the men's shed. That's, I'll go back to blue for this other one because um, value in these, again, is a, is a personal value. No external valuation on these. Then the next statement again, which uh, a statement, a claim of bullying for months and from senior members of the shed. That's interesting language used there. And then this idea of being expelled for life, okay? And then finally, again, they refuse to sign a code of conduct because of the lethal state of it. So we just generally look at those. Let me just uh, look at these. This was number five, um, six. Uh, okay, that was in the six was going to just go back and that six was the sorry six was one of the worst storms in Donegal. All his tools being totally ruined. We'll say is seven. Um, I'll come back and well, we'll just deal with number eight them being unique, high standard. We'll do deal with those two together, and I'll just zoom in here. They were intended for the benefit of the shed number nine. We just we we'll look at that, and then we we'll look at this uh, statement of suffered months of bullying and then of course uh, and I just take on the ruler to get rid of the ruler and then we just take that uh, for life yeah the other one of course is the certificate I asked for a certificate we'll just look at those number 12 so there are 12 items that I just want to go through one after the other and interrogate um, those um, I just wondered so if I just so if I want to seal those changes I just press done and that will retain those within the photograph so that as you can see i can go back to this photograph again 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 and concentrate on what i want to look at okay so let me just again um so the idea of someone being a frail pensioner uh very powerful imagery uh and just to say that so again i just want to give a bit of context into where i think this matters in terms of social media um, any of you have been watching the news in the last week, so I've popped out of that. Um, so if I just go into this here. This is an article in the journal, but it was all over the media last week about the um, resolution or developments in the case of false allegations against ex-2FM presenter Owen McDermott, where uh, 
online allegations against him were made um, by a woman who now regrets publishing these inaccuracies. So she published through her solicitor, or sorry, Owen McDermott has published on his media um, letters from this woman's solicitor in which he accepts that her behaviour in this was incorrect, that her allegations were false, etc. But the most important thing is that this man, you can see this man, his career in RT has effectively been destroyed by these false allegations. So the bigger question here is, you know, for a reader to question themselves along with this, I, this thing here is, Stupidity is knowing that the stupidity is knowing the truth, but refusing to agree with it because it doesn't fit with your views. I mean, the evidence that I will bring to the table in relation to the analysis of this is that the behaviour of both John Joseph Bradley and Jimmy Boyle is such that this, the data and the factual records and evidence, has been brought to their cognizance and attention, and they continue both to um, develop, spread, and promulgate these falsehoods but also for anybody who is a reader of social media who consumes this material. Um, and, you know, the problem is that, the, uh, as I say, the rumour is, uh, is halfway around in the world before the truth has got out of bed in the morning. We know that uh, forever and ever. And it's really difficult to come back and manage to respond to these type of uh, you know, broad based, and, and none of these, are, there's no substantiated evidence to support any of these statements. However, the frail pensioner people are talking about is Jimmy Boyle from Guidor. Anybody who knows Jimmy Boyle, if you're from the Guidor area, you can make up your own mind as to whether in this point in his life, uh, Jimmy Boyle would be described in the frail pensioner mode in which he is being displayed here. That's a matter of opinion. Um, I, I, I submit that this is not in alignment with the reality that has been exhibited uh, by Jimmy Boyle over the last, over the last certainly over the last two years. Um, anyway, the second thing I just want to focus on is this one, it has emerged. And what does that mean? Uh, what it actually means is that uh, some time ago, uh, let me say, so when I say some time ago, I'm just going to pop over to um, John Bradley's Facebook page. Right, so if we go to John Joseph Bradley's Facebook page, and if we shoot back to uh, the frail pensioner stuff, okay. So prior to this, I'm just uh, again I can use my mouse. This is interesting. So I'm using the scroll wheel on the Bluetooth mouse to scroll back through, and we can see in the earlier page. So back, and uh, it's got posts about Jerry Adams there, but on the twentieth of February and before then, uh, yeah. So. Or, around a period of now I've already previously made a video about this you can see repeated repeated versions of the very same um, post that John Joseph Bradley originally put up I'm going to try and go back to the originating one um, god there's so many of them here uh, we will discuss that somewhat later but uh, I just yeah so perhaps this might be the first one. I think this may have been the first one on the 20th of February so the genesis of this original um, information emerging is a rumour started by this very same person, John Joseph Bradley, on the 20th of February this year. And I've made another video analysing and reflecting on the um, inaccuracies um, and fabrication element plus the intentional, uh, the intention of misleading the viewers contained in that video. So just going back to my photograph, so the the emergence is all, all this material is emerging from John Joseph Bradley who along with uh, Jimmy Boyle has fabricated his own uh, falsehood and has now created the rumour and he's now been um, working the rumour bill by constantly trying to spread this around. And of course the naive reader as we'll see later on from an outside perspective has no reason to know whether this is true or false and probably because we're always wondering in life you no know, smoke without fire I wonder what's happening anyway let's go on to number three it claims here that he was thrown out that it is emerged that he was thrown out because he complained about the atrocious state of the electric stockets in the shed so I will take that um, along with point number 11 down here when it was said he was expelled for life because you refuse to sign a code of conduct because of the lethal state of electrics in the said. Now, these are claims been made by Joseph Brad, John Joseph Bradley. Make it clear, John Joseph Bradley is not a member of the Men's Shed, has not been a member of the Men's Shed since September 2021, a number of months ago. As such, 
I have no reason to believe that he would have ever been in the shed since then, and that all information he can have had can have been hearsay information, presumably fed to him by Jimmy Boyle. John Joseph Bradley has not been present at any shed meetings. So that's an important thing. Now, the other point is, in two places here, it says that Jimmy Boyle, in in his view, uh, according to John Joseph Bradley, was thrown out because he complained about atrocious state of electrics and because he refused to sign a code of conduct because of this state of electrics. This is factually incorrect. Um, the minutes of the meeting of the 8th of February uh, the monthly meeting of the Scub on our 8th of February, and the Zoom video recording of said meeting, because the meeting was held as a hybrid meeting, was recorded, um, will show definitively that uh, Jimmy Boyle was expelled. Okay, this is important. He was expelled um, by a unanimous vote of everyone present except for Jimmy Boyle, who abstained, didn't even vote against this uh, motion, simply abstained. On five different separate points where Jimmy Boyle had repeatedly, continuously um, refused to comply with agreed um, policies and of the shed directed to him by the chairman of the shed. So this is, this is not, this is factually incorrect. It's a known falsehood being um, generated by Jimmy Boyle and is not supported, unfortunately for him, by the evidence, by the evidence, okay? Now, as a result, uh, the other thing is that just to put on the record that this meeting place took place on a Monday night, 8th of February, on the following afternoon on the 9th of February, uh, when I visited the shed um Jimmy Boyle was in the shed on his own. Um, this is important. He had given no uh, prior information or notice to the chairman that he was going to be in the shed in direct contravention of one of the five reasons why he was expelled from the shed. On that day, in the presence of Mary Cleary, who was with me, Jimmy Boyle specifically said that he had acted in such a an obstructionist and difficult way at the meeting the night before in which he also called me a cowboy uh, but for which he was on that Tuesday afternoon apologizing and stated that he did all this with the specific desire to be expelled from the shed and that he was very happy to have been expelled from the shed so this uh, this needs to go on the record so that there's no confusion by either the viewer the, the listener, the watcher, and also repeatedly and once again to both John Joseph Bradley and um, Jimmy Boyle of what the actuality of what was said. So on that day on Tuesday the night, uh, Jimmy Boyle uh, and I negotiated as to when he might move his belongings from the shed, which he said he was looking for, he was wanted to be out of the shed and he was looking forward to do. And he gave an undertaking to try and remove the, his belongings by the following Saturday, which would have been, let's say, the 12th or so, 12th or 13th of February, uh, which he didn't do. And not only did he not do that, what we've sub subsequently discovered, that he had actually withdrawn all of his tools from his desks, from which he had locked up, and um, the desks he had locked up, benches. Um, he had actually removed all his tools that's going to come into play quite later uh, before that sat before saturday the 13th um so what he says while he was away for the weekend without prior warning so just make it clear um there is documented evidence of jimmy boyle being informed prior to his possessions being moved out of the shed and those benches of his being um taken down uh, that of dates and times for him to come and collect his, his uh, belongings um, because he had uh, previously contacted Uderos Nogaeltukta to claim that uh, his stuff, as he now claims, although my understanding was he claimed his tools were being locked up there where he was being prevented from getting them. This data, again, I'm not just saying this data, this data is going to be produced in a parallel video which will be following the social media interaction by with of Jimmy Boyle with Skubo Navarre and the places in which he was told when his material would be removed and given him ample warning. Okay, so this is 
a direct falsehood. The next thing then, his possessions were dumped outside the door of the shed. Okay, so that's a very provocative or evocative statement, dumped. So I just want to look at, I see now how I can just show you something in relation. So again, again about manipulating the iPad. Um, I've just gone back into my photos app and if I just look at the information in that photograph here's a photograph taken on Saturday the 19th of February 2022 at 12.30 this is the, the morning in which um, the so that's the 19th of February and I remember on the 9th of February 10 days before Jimmy Boyle had undertaken to move his stuff none of this took place Jimmy Boyle did not move his stuff at all this required the work of a lot of the men in the shed many of whom are uh, elderly uh, and uh, ha could equally be described as failed but lots of us have medical conditions etc we were left to clean up this mess by Jimmy Boyle because he didn't do it himself but what's very important is um, I would just want you to look at the state of this material. So look at this. This involves a bench, which he had uh, put together against the policy of the shed, but there would be no individual benches. We had moved to a hot desking or hot benching opportunity so that we could have a much more flexible shed arrangement. But just watch the way in which... If, now, this is the classification of dumping by this John Joseph Bride. This is not dumping. This is carefully organized. All various drawers were placed inside here, uh, everything covered up as much as it could that's the first thing his other tools as you can see down here were carefully um covered up by members of the shed okay so now the other thing is look at the weather this is completely dry this is 12 30 in the afternoon on a saturday on the 17th of february the thursday uh I will show a record in the other video of when precisely Jimmy Boyle was told he could collect his stuff. The other thing is, um, if I just shoot back to the uh, statement, and we just zoom in here, because it's tied in with this. In the It happened on a Saturday morning. I've just shown you a picture of what had happened. It was dry. There was no rain in the middle of one of the worst storms ever seen in West Donegal. Now, you're a reader. I don't know whether you know where Wild West Donegal is on the northwest Atlantic coast of Ireland, etc. The storm that has been referred to, the only storm, the storm that took place that, in that weekend in Ireland and in various parts of, of Scotland, England or whatever, was a storm called so Storm Eunice. Now, John Joseph Bradley has lived in this area for a number of years uh, and therefore would have experienced a number of storms in Donegal. For the record, as an example of how wild or otherwise this storm would have been, I have no record of anybody telling me in this local area how the electricity for any of us was interfered with, how any of us would have lost um, data signals, phone signals or internet signals during this storm. To suggest that this was one of the worst storms ever in Donegal is sort of, I, I don't know, how do you take abusing the truth to the extent that it's ridiculous? That's what it is. Um, but the evidence of the photograph I just showed, there was no rain there. But I just want to also tell you that in alignment with that, Jimmy Boyle was informed that in the presumption that the, the storm might come he was asked to either move his stuff and make arrangements for his stuff to be moved i use the word stuff because that's how he has defined it it's not a judgment on his, his material um and in the event that he felt he couldn't get anybody to do that for him that he would arrange for um covering to be provided which we would then place over his he made he didn't respond or provide any of this in for any any of this material and any of the covers that you will see uh, and the the covering up and the par the, the careful packaging of his stuff was done specifically by members of the shed, not out of deference to Jimmy Boyle, because that's just the sort of guys they are. They just they wouldn't damage equipment. Look at this here. Like we went to the trouble of producing our coverings to protect equipment, which was the responsibility of Jimmy Boyle, who had been, you know, going on and complaining to everybody who would listen to him that he couldn't get access to his material. Now, I need to go on then to say this statement by John Joe Bradley, number seven, all his tools and belongings were totally ruined. So I just, this is an important thing, all his tools. So in English, this means all this man's tools for their record. And just to say that on the Thursday um, night during which uh, the uh, Jimmy Boyle's um, bench and, and 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 the stuff they had left over in a particular corner were dismantled and collected um by 
a number of shed members, not just one person. There's a number of photographs and videos taken of this. And for the record, the only tool that was in these drawers or benches that Jimmy Boyle relates to was, I think, a saw. We were surprised, given the fact that we had been told that he had complained to the uterus that, all, that he couldn't get even access to tools, that all of his tools had been removed by Jimmy Boyle prior to any of this taking place. This is important, just the, all his tools. So when this man here mentions all his tools and belongings were totally ruined, this is factually incorrect. Okay, it's factually incorrect. The second question is the person who wrote this is John Joseph Bradley. A guard once told me that the guard is entitled to give evidence from that which is within his material knowledge, which would suggest that John Joseph Bradley should have material knowledge of this. And he doesn't, neither, there's no proof that he's, no evidence that he's material knowledge, but he couldn't because it's incorrect. So let me, for clarity, there were two items that might be classified as tools removed from the shed at the same time. They were not anywhere near his benches. They were on another bench. They involved a yellow 110 transformer. Anybody who knows anything about 110 site transformers will understand they're designed for outdoor work. So to suggest that they would be ruined by being out in the rain, stupid. The second one was a, a, a saw, an electric saw, a Makita, I think, electric saw, 110 saw, which is what would require the 110 transformer. This item was carefully put in a drawer outside and covered up. That's the only item was there. So the other thing, if this were true, that... Even if this one, rather than all of them, were totally ruined, it would be up to Jimmy Boyle and J.J. Bradley have produced evidence of this. I'll, I'll, I'll move on to number eight here, and I've underlined it in blue because it talks about one-offs as being which were totally unique. Again, uh, I, let me just look again, probably, at that picture. I know this doesn't show you everything, but um, I just wonder if I can see anything which we could even see. So this here is a tabletop as you can see this piece here it's um it had been flamed and painted by jimmy boyle don't know what it was for it was seemingly an incomplete piece of work this uh, other item of whatever i mean i'm not here to comment on this stuff but just to this is the sort of stuff we're talking about so just if, if anybody's under any some illusions here of some famous artwork being taken just this is not correct um but more importantly, it moves on to say that these eyes were crafted at really high standard. Again, these are in the eye behold. I'm not interested in making comments about that, but I will make a comment. It says they were intended to be sold for the benefit of the shed. Now, you know, this is a statement made by John Joseph Bradley. It can only have been informed by the words of James Boyle or Jimmy Boyle. And this would be news to the shed. There is no indication written or otherwise ever of this to be sold for the benefit of the shed. So again... I'm not. It's a falsehood insofar as it's not recorded in any public space or the shed. The shed, shed administration are not aware of this at all. Um, but it's a furtherance of the sort of outlandish claims, and then moves on to say they were valued at hundreds of euro. I'm not here to say what they're valued at. I know they didn't produce any value to the shed in any way, shape, or form. Just moving on then to number ten, where Jimmy Boyle says he had, that he suffered from months of bullying from senior members of the shed. So this language of bullying keeps coming up in the language of John, uh, Jimmy Boyle, um, and it. I suppose it dates back to the period when Jim JJ John Joseph Bradley voluntarily walked out of the shed because the shed at, at he walked out at a monthly meeting when he uh, issued an ultimatum to the to the group, not to the committee, but to the meeting, that if it didn't move a particular table because he wasn't happy with it, he was walking. And without further discussion, he just walked. Subsequent to that, Jimmy Boyle started using the language saying he was being bullied. So in order to try and help clarify the situation, me personally, I um, followed and completed a bullying information course on the Health Safety Authority website, hsa.ie. Um, I went to the trouble of 
discovering, uncovering, examining the definition of bullying, it seemed to me that whatever Jimmy was talking about simply didn't fit in in one shape or form to that. I spoke to Jimmy about the idea. I asked him, would he be prepared to do like I did, go and do the course and examine it, or at least look up the the definition of the allegation of bullying? And Jimmy Boyle specifically said to me, I don't read these documents. I'm telling you it was bullying. So Jimmy Boyle then came to a, a monthly meeting at which, again, he was requested to develop a follow a grievance path where he would lodge his allegation of bullying as so you know in in um accompanied by whatever evidence he had to support his claim so the following month we had a meeting jimmy boyle didn't bother turning up and had not produced any supporting evidence so he just keeps on going again and again refusing to get involved in any process so i put it to the reader that very little way of dealing with it so again because he refused to sign a code of conduct Again, I've repeated above, the evidence shows that there were five points on which for a number of months Jimmy Boyle had refused to follow the policies of the shed. And just in a line, let me go back to the front. A frail pensioner, this is the ultimate test, a frail pensioner thrown out. So this is a man who is a frail person. So I put it to you that would it be safe for a frail person to be operating on his own in a shed without anybody knowing he was there would that be safe now that's a question so in response to the growing awareness through the shed over the period since coming back together post-covid where as a group of a fledgling group this group have been trying to develop better and improve governance practices supported by the donegal local development company under the european psych cap program um, it was recognized that there was always a danger in any individual being in the shed on their own and what it was decided as a policy matter that if any per member of the shed wished to attend the shed on their own to do whatever they wanted to do that is a, as a safe procedure that they would make contact through either Facebook Messenger or by text message to let the chairman of the shed know that they were in the shed. So that in the event that something happened, we, we would at least know who was there or whatever. For the record, Jimmy Boyle blatantly refused and continued to refuse to comply with this most reasonable safety request. So when we're talking about a frail pensioner being thrown out of the shed, this is someone who wouldn't follow a very reasonable requirement for um, to ensure his own safety. The last item I'll pick up in here is I asked for a certificate to cover the sockets which were overheating. Okay, so the first thing is I just want to make it clear that Jimmy Boyle and JJ Joe John Joseph Bradley continually keep mixing up plugs and sockets. They keep using them, um, mixing them up in their conversations. And Jimmy Boyle uh, stopped me one day coming out of the one of the rooms. Said to um, uh, demand that I read these certificated documents that he had from. He said his own. Uh, private business of renting house or whatever and he said these were compliance documents and he said I should read these and these are done this was sometime maybe in November when I looked at these these documents were PAT documents portable appliance testing documents sockets are not portable appliance tests they have nothing to do with that type of documentation so when Jimmy when again these I have to assume as they're written I asked for a certificate these are the words of Jimmy Boyle Jimmy Boyle didn't ask for a certificate to cover sockets at any stage that's the first thing it's really important that he that's not what he asked for the other thing is that about sockets which are overheating the first time Jimmy Boyle brought these specific item to the attention of the shed was on the 8th of February, Monday, at the meeting. The first time. That's the first time there's any record of him noting these. John Joseph Bradley has elsewhere written that he had told me personally on numbers of times, and he has stated that he has a number of people who will witness that. None of this has ever been, none of this evidence has ever been produced. 
and to say that this is simply not correct. The only record of Jimmy Boyle throwing this in is in uh, at that meeting on the 8th of January. And the subsequent video that I have posted in support of my analysis of this, um, you know, absolutely makes it clear that this, there is no wiring issue with any sockets. We have at this stage believe we've ascertained the problem relating to an event back in before COVID where a wet plug possibly had local overheating in it and created burn marks on the outside of the socket. And I have and have retained these sockets for external analysis, if and so required. Anyway, that's my analysis of the uh, the statements themselves. What I want to look at now is the, um, I just want to go to the Facebook page of John Joseph Bradley. And so that's John Joseph Bradley there. In fact, he's actually been photographed in one of the rooms in the shed in the background. That's still on his profile. So on Wednesday last, which is, say, four days ago, this is the first time I had seen this next version of an attack on the shed. And just to say at this time, um, Jimmy Boyle has, in writing, confirmed that he personally um, has lodged a complaint with the health the health and safety authority in ireland which we are processing um and we will demand that it'll be processed professionally cogently and evidence based so they have been provided with all of the data that the shed has at its disposal um by definition of our rights to a fair hearing and the rule of natural justice of Audi Alter and Partem, we will be requiring and have required from the HSA that they supply us with all of the evidence which uh, has been adduced uh, which to which we're expected to respond uh, and then we will look at this properly. But the other issue that we want to be very clear about is in the event of there being proven false allegation in relation to this, that there is a commensurate punishment and accountability for the people responsible for um, a false allegation, which is again what I said is the situation um, w pertaining to, to the own McDermott issue in the public space at the moment. So the first thing is, uh, will I just see when this first um, report, uh, okay, so it looks to me that, uh, so we look at this one here, it says, again, we did five days ago, so I'm not sure what was happening five days ago, but let's look at this one here. So that's the first uh, thing. I, I think there was probably about 10 of these, but I want to count them. And then I just want, as I'm doing this, I want you to read her. So again, just to bring me mouse into play again, I have my mouse here and I'm going to use the uh, scroll the, the scroll wheel on the mouse just to scroll through them. I'll try and get them. I think there's about 10 of them. So that's number one. Repeat number two. So that's number two. Three. Four. So the same thing four times, five times six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, ten times, eleven times, twelve times, God, it's a lot more than ten, thirteen, that's thirteen, that's fourteen, it's fifteen, I got it's a lot more than fifteen, sixteen, same thing, seventeen times, eighteen times, nineteen times, He's gone as 19 times he's repeated this stuff. He's back up here 20 times. That's one day ago. And uh, then he threw in, it's 20, but he threw in as an interjection, um, a, 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 call, a, a reflection back to the earlier one of the 20th February. So I think it was 19, I think we're after. 19, that's 20, 21, 22. Okay, is there any more? 22. So this is the same post put up 22 times. So... Is the, you know look at it's hard to imagine any other conclusion other than this is an obsession with this person. The first thing this is an obsession, and in another video I want to try and analyze you know why do why are why are these things happen? But what I do want to look at is some of the comments because it's obviously only comments are some of the earlier ones, and just say when I. When I saw this first, one of the things I started doing the internet is you know, how do you counter false allegations on social media? And what I realized, we have a very weak society in terms of protecting ourselves against non-factual information. Now, we know that if we just look at the, Amer the American Democrats and Republicans and their misuse or whatever of misleading misuse of social media right through the American election. 
But the only thing that I could see that never seemed to waver was try to establish fact. So in this case here, you know, I, I just, you know, I wrote this thing, before you make up your mind, open it. There's an ad I used to see on, I think it was called Independent Bridge. I think it was just in, in Drum Conjure there as you're going along to Croke Park coming in from the north side of Dublin. It used to be this ad for the Irish Independent, before you make up your mind, open it. And I had referred to, to a couple of uh, videos which I've already placed up there, which were an analysis of uh, issues to date and the suggestion. So the next thing I put in here was, the originator of this post has in his possession, that's John Joseph Bradley, all of the documentation which details the accurate record and account of this misleading and malevolent post. Now, just to say that when, um, in a, in as I was mandated by the chairman of the Shed, Austin O'Donnell, to address the issues with the Health and Safety Authority, everything I've sent to the Health and Safety Authority in terms of the evidence around the story behind what's happening, because it is my view that they, they're uh, uh, unwittingly being drawn into a fabricated campaign of falsehoods by John Joseph Bradley and Jimmy Boyle. That's my contention, and I support that with evidence. All of this information was um, copied to the HSA, written to the HSA. It was copied to John Joseph Bradley and Jimmy, Jimmy Boyle so that they would be cognizant. We should all be on the same page and at least strive to agree the common facts. This information was then copied to our local councillors and John James um, and to Micheál Cullum. And it was copied to the Donegal Local Development Company, who at the end of the day are trying to assist the Shed and hopefully other voluntary organisations in Donegal under the EU SICAP programme to improve our governance. And I think there's much to be learned out of analysing this whole process. And again, to say that why would I bother my backside putting so much effort into this? It's really about trying to produce a case study to look at what happened uh, what was the, how do we discover the truths behind it and then try to analyse why these things would have happened what is specific to our situation what is a fractal of behaviour that applies to developmental change in voluntary organisations and what can be learned by other groups and ourselves to prevent such a thing happening in the future so it said here the originator has this has the accurate record and account of this misleading and malevolent post the facts of course differ greatly from the chosen art of J.J. Bradley and Jimmy Boyle two disgruntled ex-members of Unskewable who in bitterness have committed themselves to closing the shed which serves such a beneficial role particularly post-Covid in nurturing the well-being of men in our community Menorah if you know you are a disgrace so they're the two comments that were made there just if I move up to more to the comments then so this was on some of his next follow-up one. This is the only place that I can see that comments were made and this is where I think the impact of the spread of misinformation in the uh, in the ether of the social media is very important so we have a comment by a john o'donnell cotter who stated as far as i can read the gentleman was concerned about the electrical socks in the venue which would be a valid complaint and was only concerned for everyone in the venue and you know when i read this response by john jo o'donnell cotter I don't have any reason to believe he's any skin in the game. He's just a reader. He's someone from the area. It seems to me a very valid um, interpretation or conclusion that he drew from the information as he read it. As I read it out, highly emotive, uh, none of it substantiated um, a single side to a story. It was then followed up by a guy called Kevin Dunn. He said, I'm glad that some, I don't know what these emojis mean, finds an old man being bullied and harassed, amusing by laughing, leaving a laughing emoji. So the first thing about that is whether people think this is a joke or embarrassing or whatever is one thing. But again, the presumption by Kevin Dunn that this man was being bullied and harassed. So all of this is based, presumably, on his reading of the material. Now, he may or may not have further information in the background, but um, the question for him is, has he gone to the trouble of looking at the fact? So, for example, uh, John O'Donnell wrote there, or John O'Donnell came back to respond to Kevin Dunn. So now there's some sort of interchange developing. Kevin Dunn, there's no, that's no way to treat an elderly person. Indeed, it's no way to treat anybody, no matter what age. Bullying in the workplace should not be tolerated. So again, there's this presumption on behalf of John O'Donnell Cotter that bullying in the workplace, that it's one, that it's a work, the shed is not a workplace, but anyway, that bullying took place and it shouldn't be tolerated. 
so I came back in at that point and I was just looking for some shanuckle, um, I suppose, that would fit that. And I came across this one. No tour bre er on cage scale. Do not judge on the first version of the story. And that aligns with the the um, timeless um, and superior uh, rule of natural justice that the other side must be heard out of the altar impartment. The idea of r- avoiding a rush to judgment and actually hearing both sides of the story. So John O'Donnell Cotter then, fair enough to me, came back and said, don't worry, I'm not judging. I like to hear both sides. Um, and then I responded to him and said, for your information, precisely because of the concern for the health and safety of members alike, the failed pensioner and this fabricated fantasy, and as part of the process of improving the shed experience, a policy was introduced whereby any shed member who intended going to the shed alone would simply notify the chairman beforehand, either by text message or by Facebook messenger of their plans, so we would so that we could look out for each other. This seems a good idea and was adopted by every single member of the Shed Save One. Note his partner, John Joseph Bradley, the OP, the opening post, had voluntarily walked down the Shed months before because... Sorry, i just go back to that comment, see more. Uh, because his ultimatum of moving a bench was not complied with. All witnessed in evidence. Guess who? Yes, the very same frail elderly man. Instead, Jimmy Boyle. Instead, Jimmy Boyle, the frail elderly man, persistently, resolutely, stubbornly, repeatedly refused to comply with what I am sure all reasonable and health conscious, sensible policy. Um, by the way, persuasion was not an option. If awareness of this documented fact assists the reader in discovering how Jimmy's disposition helped direct Jimmy to the exit door which he has declared was his own personal objective, witnessed and noticed, then one might ask Jimmy and Jay to share with you all of the auditable, reproducible, evidence-based material, a copy of which they have been provided with and enjoy the book, and enjoy that book of revelation. Uh, In relation to John O'Connell, Donald Cotter's claim in relation to bullying, I I responded by saying, bullying anywhere should not be tolerated. As no bullying of Jimmy Boyle occurred, the suggestion of being tolerated simply doesn't apply. Facts do not cease to exist just because Jimmy or anyone else ignores them. And then I went on to John O'Donnell Cotter. The reason being because... um, I already have heard in the sort of ether of the local conversation, uh, it was said to me the other night, a man said, it's terrible stuff going on there in that men's shed of, you know, something going on there, the man being thrown out. And then I realised the raw flower, the rumour, um, which is which was the whole idea behind spreading that through and spreading it with unsubstantiated emotive claims was that it just becomes in the I wonder what's going on there sort of conversation. Anyway, a good place to begin Latin and Hebrew would be to request Jimmy Boyle and Jimmy Boyle and should have been and JJ to provide the comprehensive documented evidence which forensically follows the process which has, was followed with Jimmy and which by Jimmy's own design, as witnessed and noted, brought him the exit, with which which he claimed was subjective all along. The lie is often halfway around the world before the truth has even got out of bed. That's why anybody's rush to judgment is unwise. By the way, the long-term reason of putting so much effort in this charade by JJ and Jimmy is that I plan to produce, pro- process and publish the records as a reusable um, learning object case study for other men shed and community voluntary groups to learn from in the future. And then uh, what I posted to John O'Donnell Cotter in this thread was the re- the um, links to the reference material where he could read for himself the textual interchanges that took place between John Joseph Bradley and L- me, Liam O'Gogon, um, in, in terms of what was going on uh, around the time when John Joseph Bradley uh voluntarily walked out of the shed so it's interesting now i just want to it's I, i'm just for me in order to maintain the integrity of this discussion i felt it necessary uh to i need to tell you that separately from this then in a separate space in a private space um john o'connell john o'donnell cotter message me now i'm not going to show you the original country of the mess because perhaps it might be a little unfair to him it's just above that there uh, sorry here it's just yeah um okay and, and i'll explain just that in a moment i think perhaps it's unnecessarily unfair to him but i responded to him i said john i noted your reflection which you posted privately to me when i uh when i 
looked at, when I went to your profile, serendipitously, I believe, the first element I saw there was your poem, Human Satan, a screenshot of which I'm now sending. So when John O'Donnell Connor wrote originally, well, I just pressed his profile, see what it was, and it, it just what popped up, and I'm really interested in serendipity. It was a poem called Human Satan, which he, John, he said, he's written these poems since January 2020. And it talks about, uh, for me, I just found it, it was very, particularly serendipitous with what's going on. He writes, How did you know evil can be found within us all? You don't need to look into a crystal ball. Without you really having to look deep, you can see it in people from their head to their feet. If you get bad vibes from someone close, you should exit unless you want a dose. Did you know Satan exists living in this realm? You won't recognize him, though, without his crown. If you happen to meet him down the street, you'd better not expect him to offer a treat. Maybe you should take a run for your life. You know he would cut you. He would like to cut you with a knife. So, again, I mean, I read this just like really serendipitously, and I tied it very much in with my experience of their behavior. Now, note, I just want to clarify this. I, I point it as a behavior. Uh, which is emerging from the process here. But what I then decided, okay, John, John O'Donnell Cotter had written to say something to me, which I, we'll just go to that in a moment. And he'd written to me privately, but he had already made a public um, intervention on the John Joseph Bradley's page, which lent credence and gave oxygen to the fabricated falsehoods being generated and promulgated by John Joseph Bradley. And I felt that in all responsibility, he should have responded there, not to me privately. I mean, what's it got to do with me privately? It's a public discussion initiated solely by John Joseph Bradley. That's what he should have responded. So I wrote to him, um, John, O'Connell, John P. Connell, Donald Cotter, you took the trouble to respond to the rumourable post by John Joseph Bradley. Your reply would have provided oxygen and given succour to his obviously obsessive, and I said that 16 or so repeats by himself, now it turns out it was 22 or 23, of his own promulgation of his own rumour. Your poetry signifies thoughtful reflection. The imagery in it hit me with its possible association with underlying behaviours at play in this now public airing of dirty linen, all initiated at the specific of hest of behest of two individuals, yes, both partners joined at the hip, John Joe, JJ Bradley and Jimmy Boyle. My role herein has and continues to be to forensically interrogate the what actually was said, done, written by all of the actors, including all those who engage as you have at whatever level. I don't do gossip. I do do detail. You have had the benefit of digesting, ingesting and reflecting on material map mapping JJ's involvement from which you appear to have drawn sympathetic conclusions re Jimmy, James Boyle's disposition and involvement. As part of a larger exercise in mapping, tracking and analysing and preparing this whole debacle um, which is not an, at all uncommon feature of voluntary groups process development as a reference case study to benefit both on Schubert and other community voluntary groups. I will be producing a similar, uh, a separate similar video review of Jimmy Boyle's involvement and traceable interactions therein. That may provide you, for example, with a further insight into the landscape of behaviours and you may or may not modify your second reflected thoughts your first one was sympathetic to the OP, that's John Joseph Bradley, original post, and your second one was more judgmental of JJ and somewhat due to ignorance of further facts sympathetic to the frail pensioner Jimmy Boyle. However, given the thoughts and associations engendered by your poem and its authenticity by the writer in terms of seeking truth, it seems clear to me that you would, should, and will place the comments sent by you to, to me herein directly into the thread of the original post by JJ, perhaps with a further reflection therein with why you or any other reader of the post would choose to privately contact myself as against posting your views and questions, e.g. at JJ's age, me, I don't know, not interested, he's over 18, it's hard enough for me to keep up to my ageing self. You can ask therein direct question of Jimmy and JJ, for example, the evidence-based proof of their strings of allegations, the production or not of which would properly inform readers such as yourself. How on earth or even in heaven or hell does it serve integrity, truth, the public interest, etc.? 
if parallel obscene, note obscene, as behind the scenes interchanges like you privately sent to me occur, while not bringing those valid, invalid or invalid points, questions, opinions into the shared public media space that JJ and Jimmy have chosen to illum- illuminate, which in my humble opinion, with in my humble opinion, their false, unsubstanti- unsubstantiated, unsupported by evidence, short, sharp and snappy self-serving rumours. I look forward to reading your material in that thread. When you post there, I will then transfer my response herein to you in that thread for completeness, for candour and, of course, for the case study. So at that time when I sent that to him on Friday, this is Sunday, so I sent it on Friday at 13.16. Let me just go back then to uh, the Facebook page and to the fact that sometime shortly after that, uh, so we'll just see, um, John, Jos- John, John Cotter O'Donnell. Okay, so... This is where, let me just say, this is where John Cutter, so John O'Donnell Cutter then folded his um, considered response. So I didn't read to you what he wrote in specifically to me. And the reason being, I I think I respect the fact that I think quite naively um, and incorrectly he chose to write stuff to me. But, um, and it doesn't really, it's not very varied from this here. It's probably just tidied up a little. What he's written here is, Liam O'Gogon, I have listened to YouTube posting with interest. So he had actually looked at this material and viewed it. It's plain and clear. Now, again, I say to John, sorry, I, while I accept it's plain and clear, I've made it clear to John Cotter Donald that, uh, John O'Donnell Cotter, that I'm, this takes a lot of time, folks. I'm separately going to produce a video of all of Jimmy Boyle's interaction um, with the Skibol, which I believe will show a, a complete independent um, disposition by Jimmy Boyle in relation to his own misconduct, in my view. So I think it's, it's when well, something is plain and clear, all is plain and clear is the all he's seen so far. It would appear that John Joe Bradley and the other elderly gentlemen, so the elderly gentleman has been, again, favorably disposed um, depiction of J- Jimmy Boyle. Okay, but it appears that they're both good, they're good buddies and John Joe is the other man's mentor. So now look at what we're extrapolating from what little knowledge and insight John O'Donnell Cotter is still doing. He's now, you know, extending the artistic license to beyond the unreality. I also think there's a bit of jealousy attached as far as John Joe is concerned. I am not sure where the jealousy stuff comes out of. I strongly believe that the men's shed is a great asset to the air. So at least that was one positive thing. Remember, it is my contention that the whole essence of the drive and campaign by Jimmy Boyle and John Joe Bradley is that they have stated their objective to close the men's shed. So it's a bit like what I call the mad approach to uh, war that we're possibly going to see in Ukraine at the moment. Mad being mutually assured destruction. John Joseph Bradley chose to leave the shed. He tried to offer, he tried to force an ultimatum of his own view against the majority of the shed, which made it, it made it inconceivable that he could sustainably be in a future shed. Jimmy Boyle uh, deliberately acted in a in a an obnoxious manner at a meeting and and following his repeated failure on five different points to comply with shed adjudications, but stated to me on the ninth of of February in the afternoon that he specifically wanted to be expelled from the shed. Um, just to say, I should have gone back to an early, that earlier photograph where it talked about him being spelled for life. The word life never came into it at the time. It's probably it's possibly an emerging element. To be, as as um, Groucho would have said, who'd want to be a member of a golf club that would accept you as a member? So I would apply that to Jimmy's logic as well. However, um, the yeah. So I mean, the uh, separate video that I will make of of Jimmy Bradley's uh, behavior or his interactions will be there for consideration. Um, I just then responded by saying to to bring John Joseph Bradley, Kevin Dunn, Jimmy Boyle, what do you think should be the consequence for a person who makes and spreads false allegations through social media? And I brought this article, most recent article about the false allegations of against Owen McDermott and asking them now again, do I hear Kevin Dunn? 
you know, responding? Do I hear John Joseph Bradley respond? Do I hear James Boyle? No, not so. However, um, so just to go back to, am I just going to go back to my, oh yeah, sorry, again, just to reflect. I, I already said there was 22 or 23 of these obsessively repeated. What's the purpose of this except for to try and throw enough muck, make it stick? Throw enough muck, make it stick. Now, the other thing you want to want to be very wary of as, as a reader of this type of material, we live in a society where we just spend our lives covering things up. Just look at the institutional misconducts throughout our society for the last 30 years. There's everything on a political basis, a financial basis, on a planning basis, on a religious institutional basis. Everything is about cover up. Don't be let seen or dirty. It doesn't matter whether it's the present Pope or the last Pope. They're all at it. Now, I have a diametrically different view that I believe where there is a fractal of really dangerous behavior, the behavior, and I'm just talking about electrical anything. I'm talking about a behavior, a corrosive, caustic behavior, which ultimately will make it impossible for to have a sustainable voluntary group if this type of behavior is allowed to continue. And it serves no one to try and cover this up. This needs to be brought into the... It was brought into the public space by John Joseph Bradley and Jamie Boyle. Jimmy Boyle is spending his time. I met an 85, 84-year-old man uh, recently who on his way into the shed, Jimmy Boyle tried to take him aside and say, I'm the man who was trying to throw him out of the shed. So this is a protracted effort to draw the shed into disrepute based on zero evidence. And I want to make this clear. So it's evidence, evidence, evidence. So the exercise here is really to try and, it doesn't matter that it's a long time, if you don't want to listen to this, that's fine. I'll just go back to that. Let me just go back to my photographs and the code. And this is the challenge. If you've entered this field at all, yeah, just before I do, um, I said there was the extra point made there uh, somewhere in this. Um, I just see there was a particular point that I just had forgotten about. Um Oh, yeah, the expelled for life. So, I mean, the question of being expelled for life was never entered. It's not on the record. It's not on the video. And remember, there's a video, a, a Zoom video of this whole meeting. So it's not this stuff is not just drawn out of fresh air. All right. Um, I just want to go back yeah, again to this photograph, this here. I want to finish up basically. With, Ignorance is not knowing the truth, but also unwilling to search for it. So if you're someone who has read any of this social media and you're not willing to go that extra mile, you're belittling your own intelligence. That's the first thing. You're also underpinning the um, the promulgation of false information. You know, so you're taking whatever benefits that can actually exist in social media and as we're seeing all right an event that's destroying our our world and in, in you know the danger of us all of us all blown being blown up by the fundamental failure to establish facts, then at our small level, that's what we're doing unless we resolve this. But it's not knowing that stupidity is not is knowing the truth, but refusing to agree with it because it doesn't fit your views. We have to stop underanalyzing facts because we don't like the direction they point us in. We can do better. It's fagerling. It's fagerling. We are capable of doing better. And finally, you know, again, if you're one of the people, rumors are carried by haters, spread by fools, accepted by idiots. And finally, once more to read this magical, magical um, insight. And it's interesting, the word confusion, as we see here, isn't that interesting? He pulled up the word confusion, which was his name. If language is not correct, then what is said is not what is meant. If what is said is not what is meant, then what must be done remains undone. If this remains undone, morals and art will deteriorate. Morals and art will deteriorate. If justice goes astray, the people will stand about in helpless confusion. Hence, there must be no arbitrariness in what is said. This matters above everything. Confucius, from the Analects, 479 BC. So again, Liam O'Gogon here um, uh, on Sunday afternoon, the 6th of March. If you've come this far, uh, thank you for having the respect for yourself to have stayed this far. Can I listen? And if you believe that this 
either clarifies the situation in some better way, then I invite you to put the challenge to the opening poster, John Joseph Bradley, because he's the one who's in there, and actually invite him to support his own allegations with incontrovertible facts. And put it to him that throwing wild allegations, you know, <laughs> facts do not cease to exist just because one ignores them. All of the, and of course, you can, you're, I would invite you to ask John Joseph Bradley and James Boyle to circulate to you all of the documentation relating to this. And in my video, which I will produce subsequently in relation to Jimmy Boyle, there will be an element there where Jimmy Boyle has written to say that he is going to make all of this material available to the Health and Safety Authority. That remains to be seen. Anyway, that's enough for now. Let's see what it all brings us. Thank you.